My name is Jackie Kiley and I'm Senior Curator for Prehistory and Roman and I want today to talk about leather shoes because L is for leather shoe. What I've brought along to start with are some examples of Roman sandals. Sandals are one of the types of shoes that the Romans introduced to Britain. They introduced lots of different fashions and styles of shoes, uh, as well as the actual technology of tanning. Uh, and you can see that the toe shape is actually shaped. And this is quite typical uh, for Roman sandals. You can see there's some uh, really lovely decoration on it. This kind of feathering uh, just along here where they've just cut into the leather. And they've also impressed a linear decoration all the way along the outside as well. Next to it is a really extreme sandal and this is a later Roman sandal so probably dating to the late 200s to early 300s AD and if you think about where the foot would have sat on this shoe um, these parts would really have flapped and it would have seemed probably quite to our modern eyes uh, quite a strange kind of fashion but it was a real fashion. These are the Poulain, uh, they're also known as Krakow. These shoes uh, date to the late 14th century, so probably the sort of 1370s, but mainly the 1380s, 1390s. Very, very pointy-toed shoes. Nowadays they look very brown, but we really have to think about them probably being very, very colourful. The toe was stuffed with grass or with moss to try to keep it nice and pointy. And what I love about this is that um, talking to people who remember the kind of winkle pickers of the, the 60s, they used to stick tissues and cotton wool into the toes to keep the toes pointy. They become quite controversial. Um, a lot of people don't like the fact that um, uh, people are wearing them, particularly the lower classes are wearing them, and they try to forbid this by something called sumptuary laws, which are introduced against them. And it tries to limit the length of the point. And I like to think that probably some of this was early health and safety rules as well, because you can imagine people running up and down stairs or maybe workmen on a ladder, and you don't really want your apprentice to be wearing really long pointy shoes and perhaps tripping on them. And just to show you what a more ordinary shoe might have looked like, I brought along this really sweet little child's shoe. So I brought along some Tudor shoes as well. Now these date to uh, really the first half of the 16th century. So the 1510s, 1520s, 1530s, the time of Henry VIII. And you can see again, we've got these extremes of fashion, really extremely uh, wide toe on this one, dating to a kind of similar period. Um, again, probably the 1520s, 30s. Uh, we have these very low cut uh, Tudor shoes. So you can see as the 16th century is going on, the, the shoes become narrower again, but still with this kind of um, wide uh, mouth, what's sometimes called a, a cow mouth or a, a duck bill kind of uh, wide toe. If you think of pictures that you see of Henry VIII, he's wearing, often he's depicted wearing quite a short tunic. Again, his legs are, are exposed. He's wearing coloured hose again. The last show I want to sort of share with you is this one. And again, it's just to show you the idea that children were also wearing basically miniature versions of adult shoes. Uh, and I love this one. Again, it's so fashionably low cut, uh, showing off the leg, showing off the hose if as, as a young man. Um, and again, beautifully decorated along the front here. I really wanted to show you these ones because they show that Londoners have always been dedicated followers of fashion. They've always uh, loved to follow the fashions that might have been coming in from elsewhere, uh, be it the Mediterranean style sandals or the um, pointy shoed, pointy toed shoes coming in from perhaps Poland and then France. Um, and all of these styles we see basically moving across the continent and then eventually coming to London. So I hope you've enjoyed that little um, view of some of the many shoes that we have in the collection and I hope you'll tune in next week when we'll be doing M and you can find out what that stands for in London's fashion alphabet.